13,000 pounds at 118 miles per hour. It was the deadliest wreck in years, and the man behind it was one of the FBI's most notorious informants. This is the headline for a story from Intelligencer magazine about the deadliest transportation disaster in the U.S. in almost a decade, including plane crashes. Let's look at what happened. Welcome to the Crafty Cryptid, a channel dedicated to the eerie, the chilling, and the mysterious. If you enjoyed today's video, subscribe and ding the notification bell. I post once a week on this channel. Prestige Limousine was a small company touting modern classy vehicles for exquisite wedding, prom, event, and special occasion transportation in the Albany area. When an inspector arrived to assess the safety of the vehicles, he placed an orange tag on the company's workhorse, a Ford Excursion, that read, Out of service, this motor vehicle has been declared unserviceable. The Ford Excursion, pictured here, was a 10,000 pound SUV that had been chopped in half and welded back together with 12 extra feet of carriage in the middle, effectively turning it into a bus, a party bus. State inspectors knew Prestige's excursion well. They regarded it as an insult to their profession and violated it whenever they could. The Husseins, the family that owned Prestige, always managed to get it back on the road. Six months earlier, the limo had failed inspection for a long list of deficiencies, including corroded and compromised brakes. The excursion's regular driver, a 53-year-old man named Scott Lissanikia, knew the vehicle had problems and didn't like to drive it. But on October 6th of 2018, he got called into work by Naman Hussein. The sticker on the excursion was gone, and Scott was instructed to drive the vehicle. Axel Steenberg had hired Prestige for his wife's birthday celebration. Since he, his wife, and their crew of 15 other people were planning to go day drinking, they figured hiring a designated driver was the safest thing to do. But when all 17 people piled into the excursion, they quickly realized this was not the limo they had in mind. One of the partygoers texted a friend, saying, The limo sounds like it's going to explode. Yes, haha, it's a junker, literally. The motor is making everyone deaf. The excursion, already over 10,000 pounds, was now carrying over 3,000 pounds of cargo. Scott took a less direct route to the bar the partygoers wanted to be at, hoping it would be easier on the car, but the steep hills caused the brakes on the excursion to burn. The partygoers could even smell it. When they finally reached the top of a hill, even with the excursion in reverse, the limo continued to roll forward. It gained speed as it rocketed down the hill, its useless brakes burning around the shape of Scott's foot. At the bottom of the hill, Route 30 ended in a T-shaped intersection with another state highway. The excursion shot down the hill at 118 miles per hour. On the far side of the road, in the parking lot of a country store, the excursion smashed into a stationary vehicle, launching the SUV 80 feet. Standing nearby, two members of a family en route to a wedding were crushed. Even after hitting the car, the excursion was still traveling at 80 miles per hour. It ended up in a ditch, impaled upon itself. Inside, blunt force trauma had instantly killed 16 people, and two more died within hours. None of the passengers had been wearing seatbelts, and their bodies broke against the walls, the ceiling, and each other. 
The carnage was so extreme that veteran paramedics attending the crash site developed disabling mental health issues. Naman Hussein was arrested four days later and charged with criminally negligent homicide. Among the items seized from Naman's own vehicle were a passport application and a shredded piece of paper, the out-of-service sticker that had been glued to the windshield of the excursion. This was one of the worst single-car wrecks in the history of the automobile, comparable only to accidents involving buses or trucks that caught fire, sank, or fell off cliffs. But the story would likely have faded from awareness if not for one factor. Naman Hussein's father, Shahid, the owner of Prestige Limousine, was a longtime confidential informant for the FBI and one of the most notorious operatives in the agency's history. The impact of Hussein's FBI cases was not confined to the region. They were legal landmarks in the War on Terror. For this, the Hussein family received hundreds of thousands of dollars, which helped them open and operate several businesses around Albany. Prestige and the others racked up safety violations some of them egregious, yet were never shut down by regulators. The FBI enabled Shahid Hussein to feel that he could get away with anything, says Kathy Manley, an Albany attorney. He clearly didn't care about the limousine being unsafe, and apparently neither did his son. Had anyone in government helped the Husseins when their businesses ran into trouble over the years? If they had, it would make the government complicit in an unspeakable catastrophe. Shahid claimed to have fled Pakistan to America as a refugee, but there were rumors in Albany's Muslim community that Hussein had come to the U.S. to escape not oppression, but a criminal investigation involving a murder. And, according to court documents, Hussein had his driver's license taken away once in America for failing to maintain one of his cars. After paying a mechanic to falsify repairs, he persuaded a DMV clerk to clean up his record. The charges he faced were serious because several of the 9-11 hijackers had used illegal licenses. Hussein was in danger of being deported, but the FBI was desperate to discover potential terrorists in the United States, and the agency offered him a deal to become a confidential informant. His FBI handler later testified that he was good at being deceptive, adding, like an actor, so he was presenting a role, and he was very good at that. Hussein uncovered a multitude of so-called terror plots throughout the years, but he'd also been caught lying a number of times. Why? Lawyers discovered that Hussein had been receiving funds from Pakistan since the mid-1990s, almost $700,000 in total. Why would Pakistan a country he had supposedly escaped from due to oppression, be paying Hussein, especially that much money. Maybe there is an innocent explanation, but it's highly suggestive of some sort of criminal activity such as money laundering. Hussein also came from a prominent Pakistani family, one with ties to the highest levels of the military and the intelligence service. He didn't need money, and he didn't feel fear at being deported given his family's dynasty. Delivering headline-generating terror convictions, however, that put the American government in his debt, and it gave Hussein something priceless, a sense that he did not have to answer to the law. And if the government really was getting involved in his businesses to keep him from experiencing consequences, 
It was no wonder he instructed his son, Naaman, not to fret about the excursion that day. However, because of the severity of the crash, a level D mass casualty incident, jurisdiction fell under the National Transportation Safety Board, not the FBI. But when they tried to give a press conference about the crash, they realized they had been kicked out of the investigation, and the New York police had taken over. The two organizations fought with each other over evidence and sentencing, and the families of the victims and the communities of Albany became so engulfed in rage that the court proceedings had to take place in a high school rather than the overflowing courthouse. A bomb squad was even dispatched to sweep the school. The sentencing came. Because the Husseins pled guilty, Naaman only received five years of probation. He will never experience prison, and the families of the victims will probably never get justice for the slaying of their loved ones. So, what do you think? Was this just an incredibly lucky outcome for a family that was able to get away with murder? Or was there something deeper here? Many believe the government involvement kept the Husseins from suffering actual consequences for their actions, and the limo crash is only one of many crimes they have been involved in. I hope you enjoyed this video. To be notified when I post next, subscribe and ding the notification bell. I post once a week on this channel. Thanks for watching, and come back soon, cryptids.